Soul Podcast. My name is Bri, that's O B R E I. Thank you so much. Today's episode is going to be something a little new. I'm going to be doing two new series within the end of 2022 that's going to continue on to 2023 after I take a break from January 2023 to the end of March. And that's going to be the edition of K drama series where I just talk about dramas that I recommend at least once every two months and then a new release series where I talk about at least one new release while it's in theaters after I've seen it and spent money and felt like it's something that I could be comfortable recommending to other people who are going to spend their hard-earned money and then basically which is what I'm doing today basically after that I will talk about why I feel like this movie is worth spending your money, like, you know, a brief summary of what the film entails and what drew me in and what kept me there and why I feel like when I left the theater, I had a good time, I enjoyed it and it was worth every penny, right? And I just feel like... That's going to be a little hard for me, only because of my thing with commentary is I feel like if you're going to talk about anything, I really like to like break it down, summarize, get into detail, break down scenes, but I feel like with new releases, in terms of commentary, my goal is to sort of convince you to see the film with new releases, whereas my other commentary with films that aren't as new and not actively in theaters is to sort of go back to those older films or just some of my favorite films that I feel like everyone should watch at least once really break it down and then you can go watch it and experience it for yourself because I don't see the point in talking about film if you're not really going to talk about it but it's a little different when we're talking about films that are still in theaters that directors are trying to get people to go see and you know that affects people's real like jobs and things like that things that aren't actively gonna drop on streaming right away and you know they're they're paying attention to the box office numbers but I'm only gonna recommend things that I feel like I would spend my money on to other people and then not even just that like I spent my money and felt like it was worth it I've been to tons of movies I go to movies movie theaters all the time and I do not always enjoy the films (laughs) you have to see it to know but I do feel like having sort of an avenue after people watch a trailer and they're still maybe not sold they tend to go and search and I want to be sort of someone that people can trust to be like okay well she has good taste I trust her I'm gonna go spend my money on this and obviously it's always just gonna be up to someone's personal taste and people's opinions but I still feel like it's worth worth a shot like I said I'm probably gonna do this like once every two months maybe more just depending and in the future you know I won't have like an intro like this but this is the first time that I'm doing this with my new rollout of you know regular commentary k-drama recommendations since I watched so much k-drama and then now this new release series for the one that I'm doing today but I just felt like I needed to do sort of a a summary of the details of what's going to be coming after my little break. So that being said, I'm going to try to sort of hone in on my experience in theater today after watching the new film that was dropped, which was The Menu. And let me just pull something up. Okay, so the film I went to see was called The Menu. It's rated R. It was obviously released in 2022. It has a runtime of an hour and 45, well, 46 minutes. And it is directed by Mark Malad. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Some names that arrive, some of the main characters and main actors are Ralph Fines, or Fines. Sorry if my pronunciation is off. Anya Taylor-Joy, Nicholas Holt, to name a few, and I will recommend that you look at the trailer 
to sort of get an understanding of the overview as well, but basically, even as it's portrayed in the trailer, and also, side note, if you go and watch the trailer, and you feel like the trailer shows too much of what the film is, and you feel like that ruins your potential experiences as a viewer, considering these are, this is a very new film and you're not wanting to be told the entire story, and the trailer somehow, like, ruins that for you after I recommend that. I just want to preface this with that is not my fault, okay? So I've had, I think it was a while back in one of my videos a few years ago where I recommended that people go look at the trailer just so they could get a better feel for the film and then I had a comment say like they give everything away in the film, I mean in the trailer and that really ruined it for me, or something along those lines. And that was really annoying for me because, well, first of all, I didn't make the trailer, I didn't edit it, I didn't make the final cuts, so that has absolutely nothing to do with me, and that's something that was already out in the world, it has absolutely nothing to do with me in regard to that film. I feel like if the person from the studio with the director's guidance decides to cut and put a little too much in their film, that's not on me. Honestly, trailers are there to market the film and also briefly summarize what it's about. And that's going to be very important for new releases and usually people are going to get more understandings of it when they're looking at things and searching up things before they go spend their money. Again, that is not my problem. I'm just gonna make that very fucking clear and yes, I'm being stern about it because I've had people literally comment before saying, Oh my god, it gave away too much, it ruined the movie. That trailer was not fucking approved by me and released from a studio by me, so get over it. I'm just gonna make that very clear. Okay, now that that's said. <laughs> okay, so this film is basically starting out with this group of people. They do come across as a higher social class, but one of the main characters who's played by Anya, her character's name is Margot, she gets invited by this guy, um, in the film his name is Tyler, to go on this, I guess, it's not a trip, but to go to this sort of restaurant that's in a very secluded space and she's just sort of out of her element, she's different from the rest, so on and so forth, but just so you know, they're going to a restaurant that's very secluded, it's like a small group of people from a higher social class, she gets invited by this guy who's like, he considers himself an expert in all things food, to a point that he's pretentious about it, which you'll see. And things start to unravel as the film goes on, you think it's gonna be a certain film and then it, it turns into a, a completely different film. But I think the few things that you need to understand that you probably will get from the trailers, but I want to kind of make clear because there are some things that I wasn't expecting, not just like, oh, there was a twist or this is just completely different from what the trailer obviously gives away, but it is very graphic. So there should be some trigger warnings for some things, I think. Um, but either way, it gets very graphic in and, and multiple parts of the film, and I just think that people should know that because I wasn't expecting that. It didn't bother me, but I do feel like it was more than just one scene that it happened, so some people might really appreciate being told that, and so I just am gonna say that. There are a lot of beautiful shots and close-ups of food and it's very artsy, almost abstract sometimes. The dialogue is full of dark humor. The film's dark humor basically. I wasn't expecting it to be so funny and the way that the characters within the film's backstory, you know, why they ended up on that secluded island going to this restaurant and like why they're there and things like that unraveling more into the plot that I'm not going to get too into. 
the way that they tell the audience is very creative and in ways that I wouldn't have expected. And Anya is definitely the person that I think the film wants you to root for. And eventually, I mean, maybe not even eventually, probably pretty, pretty often, even from the beginning, you want to root for her. And I enjoyed, I'm trying to, sorry if I'm taking a long time and pausing a lot, I'm trying to find a good way to convince you without telling you everything. But I do like that the film has so many villains, like, it doesn't shy away from anything. It is very aware of what it's doing. It's different. It's entertaining. It's complex. It's funny. It's dark. And like I said, graphic. It has this social sort of political commentary. Clearly there's a lot of a lot to say about social class. It's almost outrageous in other moments with like the pretty visuals of like the scenery and the decorum and the food. <laughs> Again, the dialogue is impeccable and amazing, but nearly everyone is flawed. Like we already know, like no one's perfect. Even the, the film says things like that and we're all human, but it's every character is flawed and it lets you know by like slowly cracking at the characters as the plot goes on, which is what a good plot does, but it does it so well and it ties up all the loose ends while still being a little bit ambiguous and a lot funny, a lot of funny and a lot of funny. I think that, like I was saying before, that the aspect of so many characters being the bad guy that like you care about what happens to them because like you're like oh people are bad but like you still shouldn't do those things even to bad people but then other times you're like mm, maybe that guy deserved that maybe just a little <laughs> when you realize that so many characters are like villains and I think sometimes films can get really boring when there's a very clear hero and a very clear villain even if the villain villain is more than like a one-dimensional character but I just say, I think that's the thing that draws you in and keeps you, you know, solid in the film in a way that if it was done incorrectly or just plainly by a director, that you could get bored. It didn't get bored. There was never a moment to get bored in the film. So that's all I'm going to say about the film. I think that everyone's performance was really good. Obviously, Anya was incredible. She's always incredible. I literally watched this because of her and I have no regrets and I wish I could really like take this moment to talk about specific scenes that really stood out to me but I can't do that because I'll ruin it. You should go watch this film. It just released this weekend that I'm speaking about it but definitely go take a look or wait whatever you prefer. I'm just saying that if you have been thinking about it teetering and you're like should I spend my money? I think, I think it was worth it. And again, these are just my opinions, my bias, biases, but you know, if you feel like a lot of the things that I comment about are similar to your taste, then you're probably gonna like this as well. Okay. That's all. Good evening.